come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. It comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, because we're on a mission. A mission, god damn it, to take over the world. <laughs> One listener at a time. And this week, we hope it's you. And thank like, you. Like if we'll, been. we'll inf- infiltrate their bodies and control their minds. All right. Let's and- just call Oh, like The Last of Us. That TV <laughs> yeah. show is really awesome, right? <laughs> yeah. Just like that. Well, you're probably wondering who these voices are that are speaking to you out of the void. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Holly. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by. Sean. What did we watch tonight? Uh, tonight we watched 2018's Upgrade. 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 Directed by? Directed by Lee Wan L. Do we know Lee Wan L? We do know Lee Wan L. How? Lee Wan L uh, started out with the Saw series. He wrote Saw. Uh, he wrote Saw 3. And he's in Saw. And he's yeah. in Saw, yes. Yeah. He is one and a half of the uh, Lee Wan L, Carrie Elway's starring bathroom couple <laughs> yeah. in that movie. Um, he's also, I mean, he's he's directed a few movies. Uh, he wrote Insidious, at least part three. I know that. Yeah, uh, he works with James Wan a lot in Blumhouse. Yeah. Okay, okay. So yeah. he wrote the first Dead couple. Silence for all you what, people who what? love that stupid movie. Didn't he? Oh, I, yeah, I don't. I know you do. It's stupid. Didn't movie. he do something recently that we did not like? He got on my shit list for something. Yeah. What I was it? Like, he did the Invisible Cooties? Man. He directed the Invisible oh, Man. Oh, I like. He did yeah. co-write Cooties. Yeah, yeah. He's in it. I think also. Is he? That makes sense. No, I feel like we recently. He, I feel like. Him. Yeah, I've, I really? feel like we did I feel too. Like we did. Yeah. Possibly. Hold on, I gotta find out what it but is. But his now. I'm director I'm output over the last few years has been good. I yeah. think. Yeah, but he's, he's I mean as a, a lot as an actor who became a writer yes. who graduated to director. Mm. Good for him. I know. That's, that's like awesome. not a bad but I was looking at him like, yeah, he hasn't done anything since twenty twenty. That was the Invisible Man. The last movie that Dude. we saw before the world yep. ended. That was a mm-hmm. that was a great oh, yeah. movie. It's a great movie. <laughs> it really was. Yeah. But he got his start directing with uh uh Insidious Chapter Three. He wrote okay. and directed Insidious Chapter Three, but that was I think like you know, you have, um, obviously he was in with Blumhouse ever since yeah. uh, Insidious, right? Where he w- wrote with James Wan. Yeah. He'd previously, I think all of James Wan's movies, right? He did Saw, he did Dead uh, Death Sentence. Death Sentence, yeah. He did Dead Silence, yep. and then uh, Insidious. Yeah. I don't think he had anything to do with the Fast 7. No, that was Justin Lin and yeah. James Wan. James Wan did one of them, didn't he? Dude, yeah, he directed seven. seven. But yeah. I don't yeah, think James or Lee went out. But then he did write Insidious. He wrote, I think, Saw 1, 2, and 3. Mm-hmm. And he wrote uh, Insidious 1 and 2 and 3. And directed mm-hmm. 3. Right, and I'm sure his executive producer on all of these films. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this is like a kind of a, you know, Insidious is a, it, it was an established idea right, so we can that throw point. you into that yeah it's that like okay we'll easier. see how it goes james blum says jason blub says and then um now uh upgrade right is his yeah. second before he got invisible man mm-hmm. so, so this, this is, is like a proving his... ground yeah this is kind of a big one for him i would say this movie comes from a very strange distributor we were trying to figure this one out yeah, sounds OT- like a fake company otl <laughs> yeah otl releasing or like who yeah. the fuck are they at don't the know what's otl stand for I don't know, yep. but they are a okay. subsidiary of Universal Pictures mm-hmm. who had a deal, of course, with Blumhouse. But I'm like, it is kind of strange that it doesn't seem to come from like Universal Pictures or some. Mm-hmm. Uh, I right. guess I think OTL also did Unfriended the Dark Web. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Maybe they're just. Uh, but Universal <laughs> released the Blu-ray. So there you go. Mm. Upgrade. All right. So. Um, Starring who? Starring Logan Marshall Green. Which all of you walked in here today, like, what have I seen him in? I'm just he like, come was, on, guys. No, I know he was. Um, he was Shocker in Spider-Man: Homecoming. Yes. Yeah. He was Shocker in Spider-Man: Homecoming. Yes. He was also in The Invitation. Yes. Which you, I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Oh yes, or, yes, I have yeah, seen, I've it. Yep. seen it. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. well but there's that other The Invitation that just came out oh, like yeah, last yeah, year. Yeah, the bad one. Yeah, yeah. The good, the good Netflix one that came out, which was that was a theatrical one. It did. Did well, it come out? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. thought it was, it was like a big Netflix thing. Yeah. Um, he's also been in, uh, again, as I pointed out, he was one of the stars of the OC. Stars. Yeah. He had a he season had an arc. plot. Yeah. He, had, he, had a, he had a couple. He was, he was season, like, like a 10 episode run. Yeah. A little bit before. He was yeah. the second uh, Trey 
in the series, the first time Trey shows up, he's played by a different guy. But yeah. Uh, Trey, what's what's his last name? Um, oh, um, what's Ben Pretenzi's character's name? Um, I don't even remember his name. Fuck. Yep. Uh, Ryan, Ryan Atwood. So that he was, was, yeah, right, Trey so Atwood. Trey Atwood. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So he played Trey Atwood in that. Um, he, was he was a in, plot device. Basically, yeah. yes. Yeah. He got well. He got shot. He in one of the most infamous scenes from the yeah. OC, the Jason Derulo <laughs> song, that he gets shot <laughs> in the season two. Uh, yes, yeah. finale. Because I, I remember the first time I watched the show, I was like, "Oh, they're jumping the shark this early on! Wow, end of oh, season yeah. two, and we're going." No, they burned through a lot in like, that show. They yeah, really the show do. only ran for like what, like four seasons? Four seasons, and but it covered a lot of ground in four yeah, seasons. But the best part. Is- <laughs> I, I watched it for the first time during COVID. Yeah. And you guys were loving my yes. my messages yeah. when I was yeah. watching it. Yeah. It's when, great to have someone go first time for the OC. I'm like 20 moment. years later. I'm like, Marissa did what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that show is wild. Mm. It is wild. Yeah. It's a fun one. Uh, and he was also in um, Prometheus. Oh, yeah. He yeah. Was. Who was Prometheus? Yeah. Prometheus. Devil. He was Numi Rapace's uh, boyfriend. Gotcha. Right. Okay. He's the first, he got the 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 black goo in his yep. drink and yeah. oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So he's like you know him. He shows up. He's in things. I like him as an actor. Yeah. Well, uh, you might know him as looking exactly like, like Tom, Tom Hardy. Hardy. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say because yeah. this movie <laughs> is like this movie is the Wish version of a lot of things, right? Like it was this, with actors as with we, actors. As we yeah. were this is like all C just, C team actors. Like they really yeah. pulled them up for like you know yeah. the, as much as the you're lower going, like, Who the hell's OTL? I think yeah. they did all the casting on this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we just need the one level down and the look alike. Yeah. Yes, and that's this whole movie. It's right. hilarious but it how come consistent out, it is. It yeah. did come out the same year, 2018, as Venom. I looked it up. Which, okay, <laughs> this was this was June 1st, 2018, okay, so and Venom was October 8th, 2018. So this is first. Yeah, there had to be somebody going like you know. No, Lee, the plot of your movie is a little bit like this Marvel thing that they got coming up. I mean, so okay, Arbor- we'll, we'll open first. It'll <laughs> be fine. And that, and that is, you get there first, then yeah. the other well, one gets compared to you. You get there first, and then and you bamboozle him because it looks like Tom Hardy's in yeah. two movies. Right? You I know? wonder if that was intentional. I mean, you have genius, to wonder. You yeah. I mean, <laughs> right, you wonder what gets... It's shocking how much he... Well, it's not a striking resemblance. They are the same. They look like they clones. Look, yeah. Like, yeah. like the face and the bearded. eyes. When they're yeah. bearded, yeah. they have that same Just look. Like, yeah. But you wonder what comes down the line in production offices. Who's right. talking about yeah. what? Yeah. What scripts have made it somewhere? Somebody read the Venom script a year ago, and they're just like, well, maybe we do something a little different. I'll, you know, what was Lee Wan-El thinking at this point? Because he wrote and directed this movie. Now, were you saying that the script for this existed for a period of time? Yes, for at least seven or eight years before. Ooh, was this like a started. famous blacklist script? I don't know if it was on the blacklist. It was it around. It feels like it would be. It, w- it was there for a while before they ended up making it. Probably something he had in a drawer and may have been on the blacklist. Well, that's bit. what I'm saying. Did, did Blumhouse catch wind of Venom? And they're like, hey, bust out that script that's just like Venom. Now's the year but, to do uh, it, but, you know? Uh, <laughs> Because Blumhouse is kind of like the Corman of it all. Like, yeah, you know, Corman yeah. would be like, "Oh, we got an alien movie coming yeah. out. We got to yeah. fucking make you yeah. know uh, what, what was it called? Um, oh, uh, the Forbidden, World. Forbidden World. Forbidden yeah. World. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you yeah. know, and yeah. then we have those um, uh, one of my favorite things, the competing similar movies. Yeah, yeah. this yeah. is yes. the Deep Impact Armageddon of 2008. Yeah, but yeah. I never really heard that. I guess like when this came out, like it kind of came out. Well, the this came critical, out first, so yeah. you couldn't compare it until Venom came out. But I out. think we all knew that, you know, like there were trailers for Venom at this point. That was mm-hmm. when they, you know, were still right. advertising movies months before they came out. Are they still doing that? I don't know. No. Now it seems like they advertise and it comes out next week. Yeah. And then it's mm-hmm. on video two, yep. two weeks or two months later. Um, but, uh, I mean, I remember seeing the the trailer for it and thinking that it looked like, because I thought it, maybe it was Venom at first because <laughs> he looked like he Tom Hardy. So, yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, See, I had never, I had never heard of this until like maybe like a couple years ago. Okay. I I just saw the I just saw the image. Yeah, like I had never yeah. heard not, of the movie. Not a great poster. No, yeah, no, I not, just, no, there's, really there's not enough. No, not yeah. representative of what the movie is. Which right. is weird because there's so much cool design and style to this movie. It's a shame that they don't put any of that in the poster. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. yeah. some artists on Instagram, I could see do really amazing posters for this movie that would oh, sure. have tons of detail. In Eventually, it. we'll like, probably get that. For yeah, this, it uh, has a cool oh. following. Yeah, I I've know, always heard people talk highly of it. It was well. I remember it being well received by critics at the yep. time and genre fans. It was just like so under the radar. Mm-hmm. It kind of came and went. It felt like in like a weekend. Yeah. Uh, so it's one of those movies, and I guess that's why we're talking about it tonight. Um, <laughs> when did uh, Ex Machina come out? Is that 2016. Oh. See, 
Now, I thought about that while I was well, watching I this movie. I love why that movie. did you? Why aesthetic, did you make the aesthetic? Okay, of it, especially yeah. because of the uh, architecture and the yeah. houses and everything. Yeah. Yeah. that all came back yep. to it. You have a genius the, programmer who's right. working on something, and he lives in a cement bunker yep. with a bunch of right. plants. And it's it. basic. It's artificial intelligence at that point. Yeah. both in mm-hmm. both movies. The lighting also seems the same. We get a lot of red in this movie. I mean, it's Lee Wan L. It's Saw. Yeah, like though that color scheme, um, mm-hmm. while not as invasive as as I've seen it in other movies, it is in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, he we know that he's a Jalo fan because yeah. he mm-hmm. said that you know Saw was partially inspired by that. And if you watch like his movies, there's always that. Oh yeah, high there was, contrast. Uh, mm-hmm. light. There was green light. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, the, oh, yeah, the bathroom scene and, or the mm-hmm. bar, Old Bones or whatever. Yeah. Was, and like totally it's purple right. in there. It's green when he meets the guy later yeah. on to yeah. finish Lots him of off. There's a lot of red. And, yeah. yeah, but also a lot of blacks. Yeah. This is it's a really uh, dark movie. And I mean, like actually dark. Yeah, yeah. Con- heavy contrast. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, heavy contrast in lighting mm-hmm. in just the visuals, like concrete plants. Everything's yeah. harsh and severe yeah. and brutalist. Yeah. And, really, yeah. and kind of really like almost black and white opposites mm-hmm. yeah. put together. And like, like s- black stone floors. But it's also yeah. like it's, yeah. it's technology versus what is natural, quote unquote. That is kind of the theme of this movie. You see it in everything. Yeah. Again, you see it in the it's, architecture. It's, it's you see almost, it in the, in, the, in the automobiles they drive. Yeah. This was the end of driving. A Challenger at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Muscle very, car versus, you it's, know. It's very spattered. Like it's primarily artificial, but then there's yeah. like, there's spatters. Right. Because we... Yeah, we are yeah. in the future. This would be the year 2046, I believe, is when this oh, is okay. So we are in a future that is uh, Looper came it's to mind. Not that far. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, far. this movie like, did remind me of Looper yeah, at several points, but in a good way. Not, like, in a way, I was like, ooh, not I can totally with advanced, this. but we're taking our natural materials yeah. and enhancing them. And, yes. And, and with implants and, yeah. and building up on this. This is what's so happening in the good. city next to Looper. Like, that's yeah, what I choose to believe. Stuff, yeah. Like, this is the city next to They are Kansas, right? Looper. Yeah. This is like New Jersey or something. Yeah. Is a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Where they move maybe beyond like right. strapping uh, um, the sun things to cars. Yeah, the solar yeah. panels. Solar to panels to cars. cars yeah. yeah. Well, you don't yeah, remember like, like uh, a lot of like big set pieces in it that like that the movie would cost a fortune. It seems like it's an affordable studio gamble. Yeah, but there, this it, feels expensive for Blumhouse. Yeah, it does. yeah. yeah. super sure. expensive this for Blumhouse. Was like four to eight million. Well, I, I Jason believe. Blum's number one rule is don't ever show a car crash, and there's like four of them in this movie. So that alone <laughs> is like true. against yeah, his philosophy. Yeah. But even yeah, just the sets and the future tech, and I could not but like. This it's, must be the most expensive Blumhouse movie ever it made. It looks like, good, but you can also see kind of um, where they were the, saving, the, where they were saving. But the low budget of this is like, I think I could do that. Because yeah. especially when the guy's got the monitor on his arm, it's like, all right, you see the scene, you track the shot, yeah, you yeah, add in yeah, the yeah, graphic. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. I right. can almost pull this off, but it still looks yeah. good. No, I mean there in was a low budget technology I, way. That's I guess the thing. It's like you know, it may have a low budget relatively, but it seems still seems like they had the budget to do what they needed to do. Yes, you know, and pull I off got, like I this look it up. future futurescape <laughs> thing. Um, so it takes place in the year 2040. You know what I kind of like? So there's going to be like a, it's an AI uh, movie, but yes. I like the opening credits are just like a sound wave and it's the yeah. AI reading the credits to it. Like we don't right. see any text. No, it's, it is, just... it's voice waves and <laughs> like neural waves as the yeah. AI voice talks to you, gives you all the production companies and it's like upgrade <laughs> and then go into the black hole. Yeah. This is the future. I was very confused. I didn't like it. (laughs) I forgot. Oh, yeah. It was uh, because it felt like I was still watching Logo Bumps. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was a long logo bump for a company because she was rattling off all the production companies. I was like, here we go. Another one. Just let's start the fucking movie. It's a really interesting way to start a movie. Yeah. 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 It's very confusing. Um, Okay. So, who is our, who is Logan Marshall Green in this movie? Allegedly, the budget was $3 million. Holy I find crap. that hard to believe. That's crazy. Given wow. what this movie looks well, like. I mean, the they sets, lot, though? They did a lot with that. The but cars, like, all this stuff. There's, you know? no, big, there's no big stars in it. Um, some it's, of the, you know. In fact, it's like, we've got the subpar mm-hmm. of most of the stars. The <laughs> yeah. Poor man's Dane DeHaan is in this. The poor man's Tom Hardy is in this. No offense, Logan Marshall Green. I love you. Yeah, no, he's, I would say he's. He's a lot better than I expected him to be. He's a good, you know. Actor. Like He's I didn't really actor. know. Like I said, I didn't really know what to expect from him. But I, I a lot of his scenes are just him alone yeah. in this yes. movie. So and you got to be confident in your a actor mm-hmm. to, to have that. Yeah, in the movie. thank you. Yeah. Did a good job because it's a very physical performance. He's yes. doing a lot of yep. like mime work. Yeah. It seemed mm-hmm. like yeah. Uh, yeah. It very. It, it felt very. Um, there's a RoboCop. Yeah. To yeah. Him mm-hmm. In this. 
yeah. in his movements and everything. It's also a, li- a little bit Jason, but more Robocop when your head moves and then your body moves. Yeah, yeah to go the, the robot. Same way. Mm-hmm. Purposefully to, done to... because the whole thing of the movie is that he, um, uh, Gray, his name's Gray Trace. Gray can control everything from the head up mm-hmm. and below it is um, Stem doing the work. So there is a, a disconnect in his body movement for a lot of the movie. Which comes across very well. I know. He, Subtle yeah. hints and everything where he has to forward act, as he's going. Yeah. As he's like smashing people in the face with plates mm-hmm. and stuff like that, he has to kind of, his head's reacting. Yeah. Like his, his, like his head is catching up with the rest <laughs> yeah. of him. It's very good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's very good choreography in that regard. I had no idea I was walking into a future tech version of Monkey Shines tonight. Like, <laughs> I mean, oh my a, God, the plot is the same. The like, mom is yeah. there. Wasn't there a mom? Yes, the there was his mom gave him a bath just like this movie. It is like a remake of Monkey Hopefully they like monkey tech. shines. I'm just like, yeah, we could put that in here. Yeah. I'm sure Lee Winnell has seen it for sure. Yeah. Yes, he has John because John even yeah. he even tries to commit suicide just like that guy does in Monkey Shines. It, it is the same movie, but this is like <laughs> it replaced the monkey with like AI, and yeah. that's that's this movie. And like, what is AI if not a monkey? But even a like, monkey. yeah, he's he's a I, uh, the AI is going to yeah. hear me and come get me. Shut yeah. up. Yeah. 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 I was like, Colin's house is going to come after you. Right. Yeah. I know. Is this thing going to just implode on me? It was my yeah. dream house uh, <laughs> here. Right. No yeah. sunlight. A lot of Colin's fantasies came to <laughs> fruition in this movie, yeah. I would say. This is the future that we're living in, Sean. That's what's going on in this movie. Ah, that's what's yeah. scary, They're trying Colin. to tell. I know. They're like, we're here already. Oh, yeah. We've got the... Uh, well, okay, so... We should set it up, I guess. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We're jumping around a lot, but... He's a auto mechanic. And when we first see him, and I guess that was the thing, they're like, well, what years does this take place in? You right. don't know. It's just... So it's like a specialized thing where I'm guessing not a lot of people do this anymore. And right. it's people who, I mean, they live in a technological future who are kind of going back to the old school of, you know... Uh, they want the Firebird. The, the, the Firebird, the, the Challenger, yeah. the Trans Am. They want the old kind of not... Uh, the, Low tech, mm-hmm. like yeah. you know, how low tech can you get? But you know, nineteen seventy. So he works on these out of his garage. I mean, yeah. I mm-hmm. guess that's it. But his girlfriend. And he's he even listening to it. like oldies music too. Yeah. Did you notice yeah. that while he's working on his car? Like, like, like Sean, you said we were watching it. They're pointing out that like he's an old fashioned guy in a new future world. <laughs> right. Like they're really hitting it hard with the music and the car. And, yep. Yeah, analog man and digital. And then world. he's even yep. like drinking a beer from like a regular bottle, and his girlfriend has like that fancy bottle that like filled up on it, its with, own. With, yeah, right, with a substance that looked like. It close at yeah, yeah yeah it, it's so like the contrast mm-hmm, is good mm-hmm. and she is uh i can't remember what the company was that she worked for she but she for cobalt cobalt yeah, yeah. is it cobalt or, or cobalt well, it was cobalt. i think it's cobalt, it was cobalt. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah i'm uh, also inception cobalt and engineering was a thing. oh yeah, yeah. yeah but she works in cobalt. the city i think this is one of the the only like big panoramic VFX Cobalt also shots. in um, Invisible Man. It's the company who creates. Is it? Invisible <gasps> so it is. Uh, yeah. It's a shared so, universe. Shared universe. Oh. Is, there are many years between them. Twenty forty six, yeah. and I'm the uh, well, Invisible he Man did his future. But yes, Cobalt is Invisible there. Man, and this is his Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yes, we well, even have oh, yeah. it. Great, it's alive. <laughs> yeah. with the music comes because it's the time it they. Up, the yeah. old times they go to piano. Yeah. For, in the in the score, and it's just like ah, oh, he's alive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> like uh, uh, this is the second time I've seen that. I saw it when it came out in theaters. And I thought that's pretty solid, but I didn't. I don't think I gave it that much attention afterwards. So I want to bring it back tonight. I mean, just uh, uh, you know, the themes of the movie mm-hmm. seem pertinent. Yeah, know? with uh, burgeoning AI and uh, yeah. all this, yeah. it's going to kill us because uh, it is. Um, <laughs> yes. So we may already be dead. It'll make us all unemployed first, then it'll it, kill it, us. Yeah, yeah, I heard it's coming for newsrooms yeah, yeah. soon. So. Oh, well, I like the uh, all these uh, movies that forecast what the future is going to look like, right? Mm-hmm. You figure at some point in your life you've seen like what the future is going to look like in a movie. It got the smog, right? Yeah, it has a lot of yeah. smog. It's got uh, skyscrapers that have a lot of greenery on them. There's uh, uh, drone surveillance by police all the time. Yep. We never, I don't think, maybe we do see a couple of police, uniformed police officers during one scene, but for the maybe, most part, I don't, I don't we're that. aware of their presence through these flying drones. And I've actually heard, like, right now, that is how like, LAPD sends a drone, you know, a call comes in, they send a drone because the cops will eventually get there, but the drone can record what's happening right. before the cops are Yikes. Up. So that's, uh, this is the slippery you know, so slope. This here. one's showing just like drones patrolling in the air. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so he has sold one of his collector's cars, the Trans Am, to a eccentric billionaire researcher. And you notice he delivers this one intact, right? 
Well, yeah. I'm like last week. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, yeah. He, he delivers this classic <laughs> muscle car in condition <laughs> yeah. as requested, you know? So. <laughs> A lot of similar themes we're doing back to back. I know, right? yeah, yeah. Well, I was surprised yeah. to see a Dodge Challenger. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, was it was a seventies Challenger as yeah. a featured car in this. I feel like we should do that from now on. <laughs> yeah. Every movie we are connect next the pick has to connect yeah. in some way to the previous movie. <laughs> uh, we've done that to bad results a lot of times. Yeah, we always we've sure. always had the response movie. Yeah. Oh. And then oh. you end sure up goes. talking about the movie the that you'd already shit. watched. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, that's true. Can't do it back to back. So uh, this guy lives in a house that apparently is underground on an ocean. The, okay, cliff. but this does feel like it's down the beach from Elizabeth Moss's house mm. in uh, yes. Invisible Man. Mm-hmm. It feels like it's on that same stretch of beach. Yeah. This yep. is, they're just underground. She's on the cliff. We have an aesthetic know? choice yep. from Lee Wanell l here. Something that he kind of mm-hmm. likes. Yes. Um, and yeah, the guy lives in the, you know, whatever. It's underground like, cement I don't know, a hundred stairs down. It's like the barbarian stairs down in the basement to get to yeah. this guy's house. <laughs> You think what happens when it rains? I mean, I guess he's got those two rocks up above the camera. <laughs> That's a homeowner. Yeah. If he thought, all right, if he had enough money to build all this below ground, he'll be fine when it rains. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. He's got anything to worry yep. about. So, yep. so yeah, who sure is this guy it. who lives underground? I think there's like the, a rain hatch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, there, there the was poor, a thing. This like, is the poor man's Dane DeHaan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he, he uh, uh, which is Marshall saying Green. something because Dane DeHaan is the poor much to start. Dane DeHaan is the poor man's Dane DeHaan. Yeah. He's in Oppenheimer now. You can see Dane. Who is in in Oppenheimer. Know, Be right? sure to make a I, list I know of a guy personally who's in Oppenheimer. Yeah. So do I. Yeah, 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 like yeah I do. Yeah. Uh, but um, uh, where he lives. Uh, yeah, there's like a, a little to do made about like, you know, Logan Marshall Green's taking his girl out there because they got to see his house. But when you go to his house, it's like his house looks like your house. They have no windows. It's <laughs> yeah. all dark. Yeah. There's little pools of light and mm-hmm. a lot of, uh, you know, yep. these future gadgets wandering around. She drives what looks like a Tesla Model Y with a bunch of. She, she, uh, they, it's like the Tesla truck. Yeah. That model that came out. She it talks is. to it. She makes a joke. You talk to your car all the time. It's the time answers. cop car. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they go to check out this guy's house and sell him this car. Who is he? Uh, his name is Aaron, and he runs a competing technology company called Vessel, who is making breakthroughs in artificial intelligence. But he, it's a man who can't wait for <laughs> FDA approval to do, you know, human trials and shit. Mm-hmm. And he's Oscar Isaac in uh, yeah. X-Mark. Yes. Yeah, exactly. yeah, crossed with uh, Dane DeHaan. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's uh, like an uh, eccentric Osborne. recluse. Yeah, yeah, that is like... He's a little autistic. Yeah, can't read social qu- cues. Right, yeah. he doesn't quite get mm-hmm. that stuff. A little Howard Hughesy. Yep. Little Howard Hoosie, yeah. Yep. Yep. He also yeah, dresses, he's definitely keeping piss in right. charge. Oh, like sure. Dr. Sure. Evil a little bit. He yeah. has a cloud. He yeah, he has a cloud. Like, <laughs> that's like a pet, yeah. I guess, or something. He plays, it cries when he's sad. That yeah. Was, that yeah. was like it my favorite part of this movie. Is he's he's like, the what pet is cloud? that? He's like, my cloud? Yeah. Mike's like a virtual <laughs> cr- cloud that he's touching he's and like whatever. He's petting it, yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. He's fondling his cloud. He really is, but that's but it's probably his best friend at this point in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you're like, well, this what is, is my this? future if I keep working from home forever. <laughs> this seems more. This seems more you than being going straight fear. Just like having just a pet like, cloud and never leaving my house. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's probably closer. But it, yeah, you know, it's funny. It also looks like the white cat that blows. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. basically what it is. You know, yeah. bring up a good point. To be fair, I would have to leave the house, and I don't do that. Exactly. So. <laughs> yeah. I think you're going in the wrong direction. I'm, I'm going to be Howard Hughes <laughs> instead. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, you may grow a beard. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Well, a uh, tragedy befalls the couple on their way home mm-hmm. because the car m- malfunctions and takes them into the seedy part of town it does. where they are getting a car wreck and then uh, this are is the best movie, by the street toughs. Right. This is the best movie uh, argument against self-driving cars. That's right. Sure somebody, is. Every fear you have pretty much happens. Because they go movie. to fuck. Yeah. Basically, this and, thing takes over. Which, and, okay. Okay. Listeners, do you think someone is fucked in a self-driving Tesla at this yeah. point in if time? If you have fucked in a self-driving Tesla, yeah, tell Tesla, us about it. Let us know. Because I think that was like the second <laughs> thing that was ever pet- done. I was like, yeah. like, is this our Dear Freak Show? Yeah, yeah. Oh, ooh, yeah. let's yeah. get the newsletter going. Dear, Dear Freak, Freak Show. No. Well, oh, what a week it's been. Well, didn't someone <laughs> die watching Harry Potter in the back seat while their Tesla car was driving I mean, them? Because I remember being like, that is the most undignified death they've, I've ever heard in my had, life. Like, Which Harry guys? Potter? I think it was... You know what? I'm gonna look it up because I don't want to speak out of turn here, yeah. so I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> I know people. Smart lady, you know uh, uh, Ernesto Gastaldi applauds yeah. you. 
The, G- the Gestaldi pause when you need to Google something before you make the, a claim. All right, yeah. I love that. The Gestaldi pause. Wait, before I declare anything, I'm going to look at the Gestaldi pause. All right, let's remember that yep. one. Well, what happens to these good people while they're it's a maneuver. Uh, on the road? Uh, their car takes over, speeds up, drives them down an alley, and crashes the car. And then? And then. Accosted uh, by Street Tufts. Accosted uh, by Street Tufts, a future gang. Which uh, is recorded by a drone, a police by, drone. Of course it is. Um, and they end up um, uh, taking him and Gray and his wife out of the car, killing his wife, and then shooting him mm-hmm. in the neck. So we have the standard setup for a thousand revenge movies, yep. like The Crow or wife. whatever. Yeah. And he's been maimed and mutilated. Now he yes. is a quadriplegic overnight. So yes. there is some of the movie is devoted to like his recovery. Um, right. adapting to the new reality that he's unable to move. His mom is helping him out. Right. But they've also yeah. set his house up with a bunch of uh, self-help robots that do everything okay. for him, which Protein is kind shake. of amusing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna and need- then a robot pisses into a glass, and you're like, oh, great, the future. <laughs> I'm going to need you guys to help me with a clarification here. Yes. So there's a scene with his mother when uh, seemingly she's bathing him, she's trimming his beard, whatnot, mm-hmm. But he starts to th- vomit, and yeah. she like puts her fingers in his throat to clear it out. Yeah, because he can't. He can't vomit because it looks like he is doing it. Yeah, but if he's choking on something, right? Or but whatever, he's whatever, choking on. That's it. Okay. But it's also the neck movement because he can only move his head in this neck. Yeah, I so think it's just like it gets. Okay. Cinched. Whatever you get the the fingers in the mouth that's clearing the airway. That's yeah. What we're okay. To so do I that. think he couldn't control it. He cinched up. I think that's why I was confused because it looked like he was in control and actually throwing up. So I was no. Like, yeah, that's she, what I thought yeah, too. Yeah. I was like, why is she helping him along? No, I don't think he had control. Okay. That one. That's why. I just want a clarification on that. Yeah. But much like Monkey Shines, the point is to convey like his life fucking sucks. Right. Yeah, so yeah, your yeah, mom yeah. Wiping your ass, which I'm yep. assuming at yep. this point, yeah. it's just it's not. And your it's wife died good. in front and of your you. Wife died. Yeah. And you really have nothing your personally head. to live for. You yeah. have to rebuild that back and up. And you, you have want to do. no windows. No yeah. windows. Yep. No, no, yep. s- no vitamin D. Not even nope. a screen that no. like shows you the outside, like a Back to the Future. No, wall. they hate nature. Yeah. They but hate you know, no, they have little little nature inside and little. I feel like it's fake nature. It is fake. Yeah. You know what you do have? You have a machine that can administer medicine. Sometimes. To, okay, but, some, to but a, where to a did it store the medicine? Under the table. Yeah, it's within the cabinet. The ta- no, the table was, there was just a tabletop. There was nothing underneath it. There was underneath it. No, there wasn't. It was it's just got, a tabletop. It's got medicine in the arm. I don't know. It's, it's got supply. Tech. There's a tube that leads See, Okay, yeah. so you're fine away. with this? <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, it's, it's like, movie fine. Where the, where the little roach thing takes over dude's body and kills people? Yeah. Okay, Holly. See, any know, other movie, he'd be picking this shit apart. You know Fountain Soda? You ever work at a place at Fountain yeah. Soda? Yeah. And you know how, like, you have the tubes that go to the syrup boxes in the back? It's like that. Okay. Yeah, he's getting Coke syrup injected into Someone's got to punch the hole out and put the nozzle on. I'm not dumb. I know how fountain soda works at McDonald's. But you're saying, like, oh, yeah, that's exactly how it works. Like you but, thought. But that's what I, I just <laughs> said. It's a tube you that goes know. out. It's stored somewhere else. <laughs> There's also a counter there. You just didn't see it. No counter. There was like yeah. a soda fountain counter for all the meds he has. Right, you just, yeah. it turns to the right a little you bit. It's like, oh, or is it like a freestyle machine? You just mix and match whatever the fuck you <laughs> want. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, I would like some Vicodin, some codeine. Just mix that shit together. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll go to that bar. There we go. Right. <laughs> well, his life is about, he can't kill himself because the robot won't let him, but his no. life is about to change. Mm, as Aaron, the person he sold the car to, comes back to him. And offers him an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Okay, when, when he turned it down and said he just wanted to die, I half expected Aaron to be like, "Well, I have a suicide booth, so you can use that." Like I thought, because he was <laughs> so like, bad at reading cues. Yeah, I thought for sure he'd be like, "Well, I have the technology for that too." You know, yeah. Yeah. it would have been better if he just like injected him without him asking. It's like yeah. you said, that's what you wanted, You're right? Like, well, well, what that's is easy? Yeah. What is this thing that he's offering him? An upgrade. Yeah. It's okay. the chip that they saw when he took his wife there to <laughs> drop off the car. Which can learn it's, anything, can understand anything, can communicate can, anything, can right? The new brain. Yes. Yeah, basically. Yeah. The better brain. Which looks like one of those little roach things you buy for your cat that bounce on the floor, yep. basically. Yeah. It's but a, it's, yeah. it's a chip. It's mm-hmm. it's like the inhibitor chip from mm-hmm. Spider-Man 2 that they yeah. put on Doc Ock's neck. Yeah. So you got to install this in your neck through a surgical procedure, yeah. and apparently it is called STEM. We don't know what yeah. STEM stands which during, for. Which during think, this right? surgery... Yeah. Surgical procedure, we we understand that there hasn't been an upgrade in staples. 
Right. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Regular yep. surgical Technology, staples. Technology, no, but staples. Like, there wasn't even, a, like, a laser. To no, no. Yeah. They're just like, click, click, <laughs> click. Like, yeah. like, like, some analog just sticks. You don't have like, future glue or something like, like gonna, that. No, we're going to fucking replace your spine capabilities, but yeah, yeah. staples okay. are where it's at. But your skin's not going back together without no, staples. The doc- Sorry. The doctors have contact lenses in their eyes, or what looks like it. Their right. eyes have some sort of tech on them where you can see. Yeah, computer contact. Yeah, they yeah. are, like, zooming in and doing all kinds of seeing doctor shit with their eyeballs but yeah no staples. fucking staples right. but Ooh. this is but this is the other but this is the other part of the movie where we get a lot of sterileness with the technology when it comes to the flesh i'll say it, it does get a little uh more grotesque a little gorier it is kind of the more human literally the more human side of the te- of the technology we're getting in the movie yeah which is. is why i think the this is, it's a gory movie, which is why I think it is. I was surprised. It is. I mean, I, was, I guess uh, knowing no. that it yeah, was, there was a, L, you know, I was you know, not expecting that. Right. There was yeah. a point where Holly yeah. and I like audibly reacted. Too, during the first kill of this, you were like, you had the, the reactions I wanted, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> did not see split a, a guy's guy. headed hair right. yeah. through the mouth. Yeah, yeah. we haven't seen it since knife. like Intruder or whatever. Right, or even a Halloween movie. I'm guessing. Well, okay. So how do we get to him wandering around killing? I thought he was a quadriplegic. He is a quadriplegic. His wife is killed. He is a quadriplegic. Religion right. by street thugs that remind me of the street thugs from Looper. Mm. Yeah, yeah. One guy looked a little very like a friend, like if he was wearing a white and black striped shirt, and he seemed very French. Like it wouldn't have been out of <laughs> yeah. right. It wouldn't have been out of like he does. Guy, but also the muscle I guy. I like, was like, he does not seem like the big bad. No, he's not the heavy. But, but think, they try to make him the heavy. I think they're kind of going for a. Um, um, you said a Jackie Earl Haley. Well, he yeah. does yeah. have that Jackie Earl Haley look to him, but yeah. I think it was more so going to be since this this is a technology movie. Um, uh, like a tech bro? No, from uh, what the fuck's his name? Um, uh, from Terminator and from Stone Cold uh, and from Lance Hendrickson. Lance Hendrickson. Oh, Jesus. oh gotcha. Okay. I want to say oh. Liam Hendricks for some reason. No, oh. Lance Hendrickson. I think that kind of more ordinary mm, looking okay. person thing, yeah. but if, if advanced. I think that's why he doesn't. Like, your bad guy would be, like, the big bad. But yeah. this guy's more an average-looking dude. But he is technologically advanced as well. But that's what we're doing. It's a it's a, it's a a revenge fantasy yep. in which the guy gets a, an actual upgrade. But it turns out that this thing that he's been implanted with uh, talks to him. So he yes. can hear it. This is kind of surprising, I guess, to us. Because you hear Stem yes. talking in his May head. May I make a suggestion? Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, it's pretty, it's a great... Lee Wan L seen brain damage, right? Because like the uh, way he talks and his cadence was very much like, you know, you want my juice, Brian. You know, you know yes. is, yeah, it, it is. It is that very sterile voice. I mean, it changes as we go on yeah. later, but it is. Um, it's a fun couple moments learning this, and when yeah. it is introduced, and how Logan Marshall Green reacts to it, and the questions he has for it, because they do. He does ask the questions you want to know. Just like, all right, can you hear me? Like, yeah. he asks the Have questions that the no one ever time? asks yeah. in the MCU movie. I know. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. those are yeah. the questions. Yes, like, exactly. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear my thoughts? He's like, no. And so they go over uh, the rules of kind of what this thing can do. Like, I can understand you, but you have to express it verbally. I can control everything below hand. I need your permission to take full control of your body to do this. So they go through these moments and they explain them. And again, this is where... Uh, Logan Marshall Green's acting comes into play because yeah. you're just playing against a voice yeah. mm-hmm. at that point. So, Which I was wondering, are they like, are they piping that in or is it just somebody oh, off sure screen lines? It's just on, it's like Scream, it's just on you, everyone can hear it mm-hmm. on set. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So his mission then is like now that he's able to move and to walk, yes. he's like, well I want to find the guys who killed my wife. And there is uh, another character, this is the uh, police inspector yes. detective mm-hmm who's uh working on the case they go to see her i think before the mid act or the second act twist that like right. he can actually yeah. get up and, and walk up. in right. she was in um get out get out yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. She, was, ah. she was the maid in get out gotcha. yeah and uh so she anyway she's like we're working the case but you know it's like we don't really have any leads because these guys have blocked themselves from even though we have drone footage we don't know we're you know we can't identify right. them and it does feel like that like looper like crime is kind of rampant and like yeah. they have bigger things to deal with is kind of the vibe you get yeah. like the, yeah. it's pretty dystopian you know yeah. well there's yeah. that one part when she was like if you want to find someone to kill for you it's not that hard yep. these days yeah so yeah so it is the looper universe because yeah. there, there's loopers everywhere out there being hit <laughs> 
right? Yeah. yeah. Basically, yes. Yes. <laughs> but STEM is able to identify something in the video that the police have missed because STEM can do that auto enhance thing. And yes, can... yes. So he identifies a tattoo. Which... And that the fact that the guy who shot. Uh, his wife didn't use a gun, which I didn't notice uh, in when that scene actually played. They didn't right. show it. They, no, they, they, they didn't show his hand. No, yeah, yeah. You, you see, you hear the movement, and mm-hmm. then you hear the fire. I love yeah, this shit, though. This was it's a, good. This is good. He's got a gun implanted. All these guys are former the, Marines, they, right? And they just, have guns implanted in their. These wrist. are the technology upgrades yeah. that I like because then you he load loads it, it through, in through his yeah. bicep, yeah. Just, <laughs> and then you cock it doing that. It's really cool. <laughs> it's, it's very. Yeah. Um, Colin, did that remind you? existence yeah, that's what i thought yeah. of with that There's existence was like one of those yeah. first movies that yep. had that kind of biological mm-hmm. technology kind of thing yep. or it's video fun. drama yeah. it's more physical mm-hmm. which is nice it yeah gives something to it it gives something for the actors to do as well yeah rather than just being something you, you know uh you don't see until later on when you actually watch the movie but yeah well it also kind of you know we were saying there's not like a lot of big set pieces i mean i guess there is a car chase later but there's a lot of uh Close quarter martial arts action, mm-hmm. which, yes. you know, it's like because the choreography is interesting because, you know, you have this guy who's, uh, you know, I think the, the scenes initially start where he's overpowered, right, by yes. whoever the guy is. He's, he finds the guy, one of the guys who killed his wife. He goes to his house and there's a fight. But midway through it, Stem's like, well, if you want me to take over, all you got to do is give me permission. And once Stem takes over, like the whole visual language of the thing changes. Yes. The camera seems, it's not attached, but mounted to his movement. It is locked onto him. They did a thing where they had um, gyroscopes on Logan Marshall Green that the cameras could track, which helped with the movement of everything. Because you're right, when, when Stem takes over, the cinematography changes and it's it's more visceral it's more tracked to him um it it turns it makes it more mechanical and more machine like mm-hmm. at those moments as well but you can uh, follow it though which yes, i really it's very like cool, yeah and you can the editing is it. really good on it is really it. good yeah, mm-hmm. yeah because nice. they're actual doing these choreographed well choreographed uh yeah. fight scenes where yeah, like it's it's fast enough but it's not too fast that it's just like you don't know what's going right. on right but it's right. really yeah. stiff and robotic yeah. and awkward too you yeah. know it has yeah. like an awkward bend to it right. because, because it's his body being controlled yeah right. it's his body being controlled is his body coming back from being a paraplegic mm-hmm. it's also stem stem is learning at this point so he's not fully up there yet so he's doing They're that. learning together they are yeah. but it's all but also logan marshall green is also learning the horrors of what this can do yeah. because this is the first guy he's let um uh stem take control of an attack and so as he's as stem is smashing plates over this guy's head he's like oh god oh god <laughs> yeah. like he didn't know this he has the, the moral quandary yeah, yeah. And right he's yeah like, he's like dude please don't get up yeah please don't right, get please. up i don't I, I have no control <laughs> like the, the, that character development is fun along the way when they learn what you know each other can do or will do or mm-hmm. won't do mm-hmm. and you know well, if you just leave it up to the technology what ends up happening and he's like he's like i just killed a man he's like <laughs> And then Stem's like, it's best if you clean off your fingerprints. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like, it's your clean up. It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, just give me a minute. Yeah. Like, so I have a detailed list of everything you touched. But I mean, the yeah. Venom movies do this, right? They yeah. do. They have this same kind of like interplay. It's more, between... a, more marital mishap sort of type thing with yeah. Venom stuff. It's this strange. A like, bit more serious. The hu- but the humor in this one, even though it's serious, seems to to me work better than in Venom, where it's uh, trying to be comedic and feels out of place. Because you can get more extreme in this movie, and then the I think the humor offsets it more, and so Ooh. it hits harder mm-hmm. when you have the extreme violence of it, and then getting outside of it and looking at it. I think that comedy is hits Venom harder. rated R. Yeah, is it? I think so. No, PG thirteen. I don't think is it? it is. It's got to be PG thirteen. Oh, I'm gonna look it up. I don't remember it being like no, this because is more violent. Violent. dude's this heads off violent. and shit. No, it's PG thirteen. Yeah. A hard PG thirteen. Yeah, it's not like a extremely gory movie that no, second one not. was like one of the worst things ever let there be carnage <laughs> Colin called it a there's, plastic uh, toy of a movie oh, which yeah. is great. Awful. <laughs> yeah. there's no carnage um so having killed the first guy of course this attracts the attention of the police they're like well one of the guys that we had on a list of suspects is dead and you were in the area this is the thing like mm. this is the only plot contrivance that kind of goes on maybe a little too long I is agree. that aaron the developer basically tells him, you know, this is a secret thing. I got it. There's a scene where he has to sign a non-disclosure agreement. You can't tell anyone about this. And so 
that means that Logan Marshall Green has to spend the entire movie pretending that he's a quadriplegic in a wheelchair yeah. and mm-hmm. going around everywhere. But then, you know, he can just get up and get out of it whenever he wants. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't he's know. Stolen if that, valor. Like, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. That, that doesn't other really, guy in the wheelchair is like, hey. Yeah, yeah. faker. Yeah. And then he gets out of the yeah. wheelchair. Yeah. Which like, was, was pretty like, funny. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was yeah, a good yeah. joke. Yeah. Um, Logan Marshall Green can be like, well, I was paralyzed. Yeah. Like, I don't. Like, it's still It count. is my it's chair from when but I was But it's paralyzed. funny to watch him do the double life and wonder if he's going to get caught. That part is entertaining as fuck. Yeah, I think that's what it gives you is, you know, that because you're like well it never really pays off with any kind of consequences sure. or anything and maybe it doesn't. there's some just... close calls with the the police officer mm-hmm. you know yeah. like when she shows up and he's like up walking around and you're like oh shit and he's got to hurry up and flop down in bed real quick you know <laughs> yes he's got a plank real hard yeah <laughs> he does. and then there's a lot of head acting yeah yeah, yeah but yeah. he has like a solid alibi he's a quadriplegic it does. you can always you know. point it's the like, perfect I, I setup yeah, exactly. i can't move anything below yeah. my neck yeah I like that he literally says that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, they saying the things you want yeah. in, in other movies. You want yeah. them to say they don't. Yeah. This one's saying those yeah. things, and it's it's hel- it's good character work mm-hmm. for them. Well, then uh, that takes us to the old bones. This is our next clue because we've killed the first guy, and we still got to find these four guys or whatever that killed his wife. Yep. So we go to the old bones, which is this uh, yeah. off the grid. I like this because the the stem is like. I don't have a record of that. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, because it's like an analog place, yeah. right? Like Cash the, only. Yeah. Uh, no earpieces. No, no, no earpieces. Tech. Doesn't have its uh, location or address yep. on the grid or anything, which has got to be hard to do at that point. This it does feels have like, a big old neon sign for it, but whatever. <laughs> this feels like a place that they would go to in Stone Cold, doesn't it? Like it the the bones like are literally like bone chandeliers. Are like right. It's oh, like the great. catacombs. There's, there's antlers bones and stuff. Giving yeah. the fingers yeah. up at the register. It's yeah. like the catacombs in Paris as a bar, you know? Yeah. yeah. It is just a black room with bones. Yeah. You can feel the cheapness yeah. of it yeah. in yeah. that regard because there would be a little bit more, but still, you get no the windows again because yeah. they're probably in a soundstage somewhere. Yeah. yeah, I guess you're right. And I don't know if it's an aesthetic choice or if it was mandated by the budget, but it does I, feel claustrophobic. Yes. It feels like mm-hmm. every scene takes place in a win- windowless room or space. Yeah. Somehow of varying sizes the whole right. through. Well, that helps with control of your environment, yeah. especially in post yeah. and everything. Yeah. Um, he terrorizes this place. It's hilarious. <laughs> as a He's like, I'd like to make guy. an announcement. I'm looking for the people that killed my <laughs> wife. So if anybody could come forward, that'd be great. Okay. Is, he just wheeled into a bar. And- yeah. Kind of a genius plan this guy has. Though, it's not because- bad. Because when you're a quadriplegic, you can go around and tell everybody, fuck you to their face. And like, they can't. Like, yeah. what, are they going to fight you? Like, right. no, it's going to make Push them look terrible, right? Like, yeah. So yeah. he knows he has the upper hand, and I love that he uses it to his advantage mm-hmm. here. Love it. It's yeah, because when great. that one guy came up to him, yeah. the guy who was involved, you know, yeah. you're like, what's he going to do? Punch the right. paraplegic, right. paraplegic yeah. guy yeah. in the face? Yeah, you got to yeah. go, yeah, you got to wait a little bit until <laughs> shit goes off before you can start punching the, the quadriplegic. But even still, what's your story here? Right. What? <laughs> how do you justify ever hitting well, this man? Well, he started it. It doesn't work. <laughs> but he's never going to hit work. you, yeah, exactly. Exactly. There was no threat to you. Look you look yeah. weird. Like, yeah. why? Yeah, exactly. Well, let's control yourself. You, you have to escalate the level of insult and actually yeah. uh, provoke this guy. What do you call him? A cocksocket or yeah. something like that? Yeah. Coxnot. Uh, coxnot. You know, Listen, coxnot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so the guy does eventually wheel him off to the bathroom he to figure does. out what part of him actually feels some pain. Which is a funny moment because it's just Logan Marshall Green getting thrown around. Mm-hmm. But in like a... Uh, uh, I was going to say like a dumb and dumber. Like a, like when Ace Ventura get hit by the three poison darts and he's just, yeah, he yeah. can't move anymore. It's kind of yeah. like that. Or, uh, you know. Leonardo well, and Stem move. is blocking his pain receptors at this right. time. He's like, so, I will block yeah. your pain receptors so you can yeah. fake being quadriplegic. Yeah. And so he yeah. gets stabbed in the leg. He gets stabbed, poked in the chest. They get to mm-hmm. the neck. And then once, and he's trying to get information from the guy. He's like, just, just say that you were there. Just admit mm-hmm. what you did. And, and he's like, and the guy finally does. He's like, yeah, I did it. And he's like, Stem, take over. Yeah, and then he proceeds to bloodbath ensues. Four dudes' ass. I like the way that he hit that one guy. I didn't forget about you. Like the, yeah. the backhanded, <laughs> right? Um, I like that. Stem came in. He's like, "Don't get too cocky." <laughs> he did. He's just, just like, "All right, let's just calm down." And this is more fun because you can imagine it in the Venom sense where he would like uh, a tentacle would come up and hit the guy in the back. Yeah. Instead, he's as a human has to deal yeah. with these things. Yeah. yeah. Which again, the physicality and the choreography is is very nice and it's you know, visceral at that point with these fight scenes. Makes it more interesting. Well, this uh, an, an additional wrinkle is added to the. Oh no, no, that's right. Uh, we have to make a quick exit out of this scene after he's gotten the information that Fisk 
is the name of the guy who was like leading the the gang. Mm -hmm. Right. Who paid you to do this? You were a job, you right. know, whatever. Yep. But also Aaron. Gotta find the is, rainmaker. You yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You do. But yep. also Aaron is tracking his movements and he was warned before if he goes to this bar and does this, there's a chance he will be shut down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, remotely. Yes. And Stem knows this. And so Stem says, we got to go find this hacker and uh, get them to remove all my safety protocols so right. I can reactivate. But the, the scene is followed by Fisk coming into the bar. And we learned something about Fisk. He can breathe on you and apparently breathe a swarm of nanobots that go in through your nose and start tearing away Chewing your up your brain, brain apparently. And <laughs> this, like, the little sharp drum little things in his sneeze. I'd rather not live in this future. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, if this no, would we're happen covering to me, everything. We're covering AI. We're yes, covering nanobots. Path pathogens yeah. and shit. There's, yeah. really, there's really nothing good about this future. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, sucks. why bother? You know? Yeah. So now. I understand why he's given up. And I understand, and I understand why Aaron right. never leaves his house. Why would you if someone could yeah. sneeze on you and murder you? Yeah, you know this world. Okay, now sucks. we're getting to the truth of Michaela. Yeah. Well, this whole feral thing. I'm just saying, like the fever dream she had one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, no technology yeah. and walls. Yeah, she's using it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, the pendulum has swung the other way entirely. Yeah. Yeah. You got to do that Dan O'Bannon thing and start installing the uh, copper in your walls or whatever to keep the uh, okay. waves out or whatever. Oh, Apparently he a, went oh, a little bit loopy. Hat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so um, uh, we go find the hacker in right. some... And this is uh, his body shutting down moment as he slowly, piece by mm -hmm. piece, gets shut down. Which uh, reminded me of Looper. Yeah, Looper. Yeah, yeah, when the, the yes. body parts start disappearing. For sure. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, that's not a slam on either movie. I no, no, no. like that it reminds me of another movie I love. No, you know? yeah. this, is, yeah. this is the good, this is the good low-tech stuff, yes. actor stuff mm -hmm. that yeah. happens because of this. We're not, uh, yeah. I don't, CGI is not helping this out. This is just no. an actor mm -hmm. and the circumstances and are all coming together in this movie. And this poor man has to go through life being mistaken for Tom Hardy and no one wants I don't know his name. <laughs> so let's right. give him some credit. Know, this he does like a great job. Showcase yeah. role yeah. right here. Uh, it's a good one. Um, he does guys, end up in there. The hacker mm -hmm. is Jamie. in like a uh, like it's a, an Inception a, inspired. Could have done without this scene entirely. Don't like this. Or the hacker living stuff in, in VR. Everyone's the, living in VR mode. Yeah, yeah. didn't not. She, was does, she does supposed to be funny? You? She was not funny. I think did not like her. Did not no. care for any of her lines. Just could have no, done without. This I wasn't whole looking scene. for anything from that. So I'm just no. Like, but they it, were trying stuff though, and it that's. I think in her whole thing about like don't gender may, me. Don't you don't know need to know my name. Oh my god, why right are we in doing a this? scene where they where they just like we need this to happen to transition to something? Yeah. So maybe it's not. It's it's not the best scene, but no, cut no. this scene out. Well, she yeah. has to reboot him basically, so yes. he can with the safety protocols off. But there is like comment in this scene, which I always wonder in these futurist kind of movies. Like the intent of the filmmaker is to say, like you know, look at these people in their VR and they never come out of it and they live in a horrible world. It's better when you know you can play football and mm -hmm. and and love and live and laugh like a robot never can and mm -hmm. you know all that stuff. He gets a little uh, speech or something about that in that scene. I yeah. think when he's on the floor, uh, which seems like completely just mm -hmm. randomly thrown in because yep. we're moving D along. The bad guys scene. are coming. Yeah. yeah, it does seem like kind of. A, this is I what, don't like this scene. Right. It no. feels so preachy. I hate it. Yeah, and it there's that here. like weird exit where she's just like, "We can't let them win," and runs yeah. off. It's and like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, it's well, like there's a whole other story yeah. there but yes. that will eventually come back to is, in a different movie. There is because the graffiti. Is we're always watching. Yeah. We're here. Like there's. Oh no, this, there is an underground movement. Yeah, like yeah. an anarchist Within underground this world. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, oh yeah, that exists. But it's not explored really. No. I no. think uh, so Jamie is a member of it. I hate but it. Um, yeah. maybe there were plans for something. It may, I, it may have been a, upgrade uh, two. Uh, well, if nothing else, there's always like even if you don't have the whole upgrade two, you have an idea of uh, if you're creating this world, you have an idea of other parts of it, yeah. of the yeah. society and everything. So this just may have been that part. This of it. I knows? felt like this movie was making a mockery of certain things that I didn't appreciate. Like, like I don't know when it's going on the whole thing about like you don't need to know my name, you don't need to gender me and put me in a box. What is th like that? Feels like yeah, it's poking that was fun a bit, at a bit like like on the nose. Yeah, oh, is and, supposed to be funny. Yeah, I. I think it was supposed to be funny, but I didn't think it was funny. I no, just, well, if funny. it wasn't funny, then what was it serving? Because it didn't serve the yeah. plot at all. I don't know. I think we're getting. It was a uh, weird choice. I, it sure. was. It, I think they're it, getting into a lot of language of especially like binary, but also ones and zeros. Yeah. Of the technology yeah. in which we're working. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, what's yeah, it trying to say? I think there was yeah. a lot mixed in there yeah. that wasn't. 
completely clear. Yeah, yeah. And it just and it doesn't benefit the movie at all to have no, this. No, it really doesn't. Again, back and forth. In order to make uh, um, a reboot scene more interesting, I think they were trying things that mm-hmm. none, didn't necessarily land. But. I just I didn't I don't need to see how the sausage is made. I don't need to see how you get hacked and rebooted and coded appropriately. Uh, just well, tell me it got done. Were, I think they were looking. Just tell at, me it's a giant mnemonic. You plug this thing into your head right, and right, boom, right, 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 guys are coming and me he made right. a reboot. Well, but watching they, someone code is intense. Minority Report and the spider tech scene yeah. where he gets his eyeballs replaced. Maybe they're big fans of but that. But that's not what's like, happening in the scene. It's watching someone code on a computer, which is much less boring. Right, but it's, it's much less interesting. Like it's the just same not, thing. Things being replaced no, and all that it's stuff. It doesn't have that tension. No, have that. Watching someone saying. code is not interesting. That's why Silicon Valley got canceled. Like, it's, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, watching people After code. six seasons. Yes, six seasons of them never so not getting well. the funding until the last episode. Then they get the funding and then we can get the office. That was every show. Yeah, I watched it all. Well, but, the bad guys do show up. Specifically, Fisk. I think this is where we mm-hmm. lead Fisk into... Fisk and long-haired Scott Stepp buddy. Just because we were talking about Creed. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, Creed's gonna, been I'm on the brain this week, Scott yeah. Stapp. Well, this... Uh, so I'm jumping ahead here, but... The going on the Creed cruise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Sma- special guest Smash Mouth. Yeah. But yeah. there is a, a confrontation... Um, well, I think there was a confrontation with the, the police officer subplot resol- resolves itself before the Fisk one does, correct? Because Fisk shows up and we kind of get the idea that like Fisk is also like a, a uh, an engineered uh, person. Yes, yeah, he we, might be the most highly engineered person outside of STEM. And yeah, and, and we're like, right. well, where does this come from? He's the Cobalt guy, and uh, and uh, which is a competing tech company. So. Yeah, so they've already done something, but we don't know exactly what. And then I think we leave that scene, and there is like uh, we have to deal with um, the cop. Who has finally gotten wise and planted bugs around the apartment? She does visit a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because she comes in and and um, after he has murdered people. Uh, is that the first one? Is that too early? No, I liked this stuff because I like this stuff with the cop and him being like him being so close to getting caught because it reminded me of Dexter. Like yeah. this is every oh, episode sure. of Dexter, uh, basically, yeah. right? You know, yeah, yeah. He almost just barely gets caught by Deb and like every scene, yeah. you know. Yeah. But yeah. they have a conversation. She drops a hearing device in an his analog device. one. Yeah. An analog, and, right? Because yeah. they're. Yeah. You wonder why um, Stem wouldn't be able to pick this up. It's got no electronic right. parts. Yeah. I have no. I can't do anything. I, I like. I like this dynamic because Stem is like in his ear, going like, "She just checked your boot for your prints." Like, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, it is. It's. It does a lot for the movie. He's like, "Stop looking away." She knows you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, dude, she knows you're lying. Tell the truth. Like it is. It, it it does add to those. You know moments it's uh it's a good convenience for the writer to have yeah because they can tell literally all the time and never have to show right yeah yeah it's but a, it also but it's it, a get out of jail free card it, for everything it kind it of really is, but is. they don't abuse it i've seen other movies abuse it mm-hmm. into an, a way that doesn't feel like good to that but this one felt like in line with what ooh, this is not be. usually a concept that you can sustain for 90 minutes so i'm surprised sure. that they were able because like i mean it just reminds me of that simpsons episode where they have pierce brosnan as a smart house and he ends <laughs> up like murdering everyone in the family by the end of it so true of horror one but like that was like a 20 minute episode you know it's hard right, to like yeah. keep right. the tension going yeah. without doing too much right yeah because i guess that's why you have that subplot there to just like well he might be caught sooner or later there's a right. car there is a car chase that they inject into the movie yes um but it's very dark i mean everything dark, it takes place dark. at night i mean i was able to tell it was a challenger because of the light that was reflecting on it. i like the little you know, striped hallway or what or uh, tunnel that they went through. They had right, the, yeah, yeah. That was reflecting lights, lights on the side. I like how they set up cop cars with the lights embedded within the like. Yeah, the LEDs car. like yeah, yeah. in the in the in the roof. It's like you know? yeah. her car's not electronic. I'm like bullshit. I, know, I was it like, makes it the looks sound like all the future motor cars. Every time we it get does, a close up just of it. To, yeah, just to drive that point home. But he he gets her to crash. Uh, Stem does, you know, because yeah. Stem can take control of other cars, which I guess is foreshadowing which, where how, the end is going. How does that work? Right. I have a well, question about this. Well, his protocols were dropped, so I mean, he can access. But the wait, so he can jump into anything now? That's yeah. where they're going with it. Okay. How it works, that, I don't know. Yeah, but that I all don't these know. things in all these movies, it's always that. They're gonna plug into the broader internet yeah. somehow. Yeah. It's all control Tron. everything. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. all it's all Yeah, Tron, yeah. It's, well, it, again, AI. So yeah. mm-hmm. be fucking careful out there, everybody. Yeah, don't let your chat GPTs take over you. It's too late. It's, it's already out there. Late. It's We're been done. growing for weeks and months now. We're okay. Done. Anyway, uh, so uh, James Cameron this week. I warned you about this in 1984. Um, uh, so. Calm down, James Cameron. <laughs> um, 
So he does figure out where Fisk lives. And so there's the confrontation between the hero and the bad guy Mm -hmm. who pulled the trigger and the motive. Why did Fisk kill his wife? She was never the target, Colin. Oh, shit. What? The wife had nothing Shocker. to do with it. But she was kind of a nice bonus because she worked at the competing tech company. Yeah. There is that. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it well, wasn't... Well, he even said that. He's yeah. like, she was a bonus. Yeah. Right. right. And and, like, and that's uh, foreshadowed early in the movie because she reveals she works for Cobalt and then it cuts back to him with a slight head tilt going, huh, interesting. Yeah. And then she says like, oh, we're not quite vessel, but we're catching up. And he's like, no, you're not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so like, why... I'm stem. sorry. Yeah. Why are the fuck... I, I'm just thinking about... If I went into the den of Burger King and was like, yeah, I work for fucking McDonald's. I wouldn't fucking say that. You know what I'm saying? Like, why is she st- like, I'm not right. trying to be complaining here. Copyright 2023, the den of Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> because it is want a den. It's like a Larry's in, you know? Like, yeah. Like the den of Burger King. And I just the like, den of the king. And why it's just are, the fucking king sitting there on the poster. Yes. But it's like a Game of Thrones fucking chair. Yeah, he's, on the, he's on the Iron Throne. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah the, he's, the, uh, he's the boss. He's the head boss you have to face at the end. <laughs> but but it's like, just, instead of swords, silence. it's just spatulas. Yeah, why are you just advertising that you're in, like, you're in enemy territory? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm just like, she, not trying to victim blame, but she was an idiot for saying that. Like, <laughs> And I don't know what department she was in either. If she's not no, a coder, she could have been she like might a, be under an NDA. This right, dumb like, I wasn't like, catering. Why am I murdered? Yeah. yeah. She well, was she knew who he was because yeah. she's like, oh, yeah. oh, you're so in your yeah. area. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. 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 Well, he's got to be like, like a. Uh, he's your Elon Musk. I didn't want to speak. Nobody wants to say it. Yeah. We can't say it again. But he is evil. So we can apply that to Elon Musk. Well, this guy. Well, is he? Okay. So, all right. He, well, all right. Revelations. <laughs> revelations. Are, well, first of all, the Fisk revelation yeah. is uh, that he was hired to specifically target Gray, not to, not to kill, kill him, him right. but to paralyze yep. him. Yes. Um, and then uh, 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 Stem seems worried because Gray is able to anticipate all of his fight moves. And maybe we're not going to oh, be able to win this fight. Right. He's like, we are out of technological or. Uh, um, well, he said we're out of ways to combat yeah, what he so he's has. Like, you got to do something, Gray. Well, there's also there's uh, I, I don't know if we, we talked about it, but there was several scenes where Stem basically says, like, look, I own you now. We took these controls off. This was part right. of the thing. And that's what you thought. It was just so I could come back online. But it actually allows me to do right. take over your up, body. Like whatever all the I want. input stuff was cut off or yeah. can be cut off at this point. So nobody else. So I can turn you stand. off, buddy. You're going to do exactly what I want. Right. Uh, but he does it, manage to kill Fisk. And so then he finds out that Fisk was hired by Aaron. Dun, dun, he needs a better dun. villain name than Aaron, but okay. Yeah. It's Aaron. <laughs> Aaron R O N. I noticed in the credits. Anyway, so he uh, goes back to Aaron's house. It's like, why'd you kill my wife? And there's a big showdown with the real villain of the movie. But he's not the real villain of the movie because this is from the writer of Saw. And you're going to have that dun 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 Yep. Oh, it would have been good. And I haven't been in control of the company for years. Yep. It's been STEM. Dun, what? Dun, dun. Which is I like. I, I yeah, like. That was, uh, yeah. I, because, and I, I, the advancement <laughs> of STEM at this point because his voice is he's been he's been through a lot. He's been shocked by a taser from the cop because everyone kind of shows up at the house at this point. The cop is there. Aaron is there. And Logan Marshall Gray is there. Michaela, is this your equivalent of two monsters? I, yeah, I'm going right. to say no, I, I don't. Think we're applying I've, this to too much. I, I feel like it, it adds in. a little too. I feel like this movie is is making things more complicated than they need to be. Nah. I would have been totally fine with like she worked for the competing company. We had to take her out, and that was the extent of it. Like I don't need I like layers the, upon the layers of like the machinations yeah, of yeah. like we had to do so much, but this was for you. And that stem stem ends up being the main best. Like stem mm-hmm. has uh, become uh, obviously self aware and is yeah. coming to control of Aaron yeah. and the company and is, you know, he's in charge of this, but he, he needs, he needs motive, a human. Yeah. He needs a human body. He needs a human body. And so he selected, uh, gray. Yes. And had all this happen to gray. So he could orchestrate this exact moment so he can take him over. But, he can't take him over unless his mind breaks, yeah. apparently, mm-hmm. which is Gray fighting against Stem to prevent, you know, like, Stem shooting the right. cop. The more he mm-hmm. fights, the more his brain is going to overdrive, the more chance it will break. And this is a lot of physical acting. Like, it, a yeah, lot of... Yeah, yeah, he is fighting with his own body at yeah. this point. Yeah. 
but he does. He snaps because he's like, I'm going to kill myself and you can't kill her. And he seems to force uh, the gun to his own head. Yeah. And then we cut to like him waking up in a uh, hospital room and he can move. Right. He's still married. The wife. I almost turned on this movie at this point. I was like. Don't you fucking dare. Don't the whole movie dare. better not be a whole a if dream. It's the, if this is a coma dream, I am I am like tossing this couch over Colin. I'm sorry, but I can't. I would love to see Michaela flip a couch. I just like, Especially because there's not one down here. <laughs> like, Where'd the couch come from? <laughs> she brought her own she couch, brought her own couch, couch, couch to flip. In case that, this moment, yeah. Bravo. Yeah. Even if you brought, you know what? If you brought a little couch, even a like, little right, couch guys, just I'm to flip over, yeah, and just started flipping little couch. I bet it'd be satisfying. That would be great. <laughs> Why didn't but, Stem take Aaron over? That's what I don't understand. He's a Why not? Playing. Come on. But at least to jump to the next person, if nothing yeah. else, right? I Take him over, a, leave the house, I, and find someone better. You I know, think there's a lot in that procedure, though. Then like it I don't. Hidden. What? Then it becomes the hidden if he if he starts jumping. Guys. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. is true. But yeah. I also think that we're not. This is um. Like STEM is the it's the only one. If something happens to STEM, like that's it. And it waited yeah. years for Logan Marshall Green. I think it. That's kind of what they're implying by yeah, being, but, you know. But I think they had in this new because they say he had to wait for uh, there had to be a human who wasn't um, technolo- compromised, compromised yeah. not at, oh, no, no implants. technological implants or oh or that's it like, yeah because gotcha. okay, Aaron's okay, got okay, stuff gotcha. in him right because a lot of people in this future have that yeah. mm-hmm. and so he needed to kind of find the perfect person to do so that he needed too. an analog guy in yes. order to he take needs him over he's the analog guy the and, guy who works on the cars and, and everything. so. If I understand this correctly, then basically his uh, his processing skills are doing multiple things at once. He's able to lock uh, uh, Gray's consciousness in a utopian he, he, world. He's where, compartmentalized him, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's locked away in the brain so a stem can actually use he, the body. He, right, he's like, great, and we come back to him, it's like, Gray's not here right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just like, ooh. And he stuff. like robot walks out. <laughs> he does, yeah. Yeah. He, he kills the cop. Yeah. He kills the cop. He, well, he kills his creator, Aaron, because yes. he doesn't want Aaron to a stop make, him or make another stem. Yeah, which is which I think is part of the thing that, that he is the only one. Yep. This is not a mass produced thing. It's not uh, uh, Terminator Genesis, as you say. Yeah, it's not yeah. That yeah. Full yeah. Thing. It's well, this is, over this is a Highlander yeah. situation. Yeah. Right. It is more. <laughs> un- <laughs> yeah. It, but it's more unique, which makes it, um, it it shrinks it the world down a little bit because I I like that this is not sort of a world ending type thing it's a very it's a smaller story i mean it does get bigger sometimes but um keeping it within these characters and not having it be a worldwide decimation type thing is nice also kind of similar Which, to uh ex machina yeah. yeah yeah all right but that's but I those mean, stories like those they work yeah. I mean, that's why we i mean during this time especially when you know technology is advancing at such a fast rate ai is these stories will continue to come out or they this mm-hmm. version of them because we always look like oh what is what is the advantage and then the movies go what's the disadvantage yeah. Yeah. what's the yeah. horrifying yeah. part of this that yeah. we can create opposite of you know all the news headlines of the great advances we've made in technology well what can that technology yeah. do that's so a- Ex Machina, Looper, Invisible Man, and Upgrade are all the same universe we've established, right? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like it. I'm good for it. uh, If nothing else, they exist in that genre, that world. We're Mm -hmm. just like, all right, identifiable, but I like you. I like them all. They are. They are the warnings. (laughs) All right, well. Smash everything. Go to the country. Live in cornfields. (laughs) Disconnect it all. Disconnect. Um, all right, so we're going to tell you whether or not you should watch Upgrade, but before we do that, we're going to answer some of your mail, and in order to do that, we're going to summon our mailman. His name's Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. <laughs> do you thank think Igor can you. get an Upgrade? I mean, he, he has, needs one. Yeah, he, he does. <laughs> like, I don't think anything, any part of him is technological at this point. Yeah, well, it's he's a good place to start. Yeah, he, he, he is. Up, he's yeah. a very he analog. does make that noise. Yeah. Right, he is very. He does make yeah, that noise. He makes that noise he, right. when Colin has to download the mail. Yeah. Yeah. It's good though because we always know where he is yep. at yeah. these moments. But, but, but Colin can't make any phone calls though. That's the thing. Right, he's a block of signal. Short outs with Igor and the rest of the house. Yeah, like I'm surprised he's not technologically advanced at this point. We'll get there. 
I know. Yeah. Don't put yeah, any guns soon. in his arms, yeah. Colin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that comes next. The guns of Kimbo and <laughs> yeah. oh god, yeah, yeah. yeah. stapling them. To that's the, the yeah. lo-fi version of this movie. You <laughs> staple it to your hand. Yeah. yeah, that does feel like that's about the same like aesthetic or budget level as this, right? Like There's, all these yeah. kind of yeah, this, yeah. yeah. That's about They're right. like the non-studio kind of grungy Weird genre pick, yeah. dark kind of yeah. yeah. I wonder if this would have benefited from like a brighter, you know, um, just cinematography or something no. like that. Right? I kind of like mm. it as it is. Yeah, yeah. Nope. I like the 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 low, you know, the low low fineness of it, mm-hmm. even it not being bright. I'm cool with that. Uh, well, we should let the good folks at home know how they can participate on this uh, interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us directly. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on threads if anybody's still there or Instagram <laughs> at Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, about upgrade, Ryan Larson says it's a better Venom with a Tom Hardy doppelganger to boot. Mm-hmm. It yes. sure is. Um, I'm, but I'm sorry, Sean, this does not have a theme song the way Venom does. And we know oh, how yeah, much you yeah. love. <laughs> Sean, Sean's favorite song is the Eminem Thank Venom for the song. Setup, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that song. That's all that yeah. song is. Good. It's, it's, it's fun, though. Uh-huh. Uh, Upgrade has no such song. No, I'm sorry. No, Point Venom there, you no, know? No, it's not even fun. Upgrade. No, it's not even fun. <laughs> Upgrade has the drone score. Yeah, yeah it does. Drone yeah, score. Yeah, yeah. Everybody does the drone score now. Uh, my mostly unfabulous life says the better venom with the <laughs> wish dot com Tom Hardy. That's yeah, what exactly. Yes, what the, the, the wish hell is wish dot com. com for those? Oh. It's it's like oh, a knockoff gosh. Amazon of but stuff with, that's like off brand from weird. China. Weird, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Weird yeah. Shit. And it takes like six weeks to get here, but yeah. it's a dollar, and it's right. not what you ordered. Yeah, <laughs> it's also like, it's, yes. but it's yeah, right. It's also like weird, sexy it's, shit as yeah. well. It's like, basically not like if you actually need something, it's for entertainment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also. Have like eight weeks right. to kill. But do yeah. you need a three prong dildo? Yeah, We've got one of those. Yeah. As well. and guess what? We'll put it right on your Facebook ad, so right. everyone will yeah. see it. Yeah. Do you want a mask for your squirrel? We yeah. got it. Right. It's weird shit. Yeah. 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 The horse. Yeah. Do you yeah. want a horse mask for your squirrel? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a thing. That's what they do. It's man. Uh, I w- man, I wish I had that. So many plastic mm-hmm. wigs. And then wish.com yeah. was. Yeah. It's wow. so fucking weird. We should have thought that one up. Asobi Datura says upgrade was shot in Melbourne with yep. parts of my local neighborhood where I went to grade school and etc. You don't see the school in the frame, if I remember correctly. But yeah, I'm proud of how far Lee Winnell and James Wan have come as filmmakers from Melbourne, Australia. So there yeah. you go. I love that. That's so cool. Yep. Outdoor shots? Um, there was a couple They're of yeah. c- yeah. city s- scapes, but yeah. they've been but we CGI. Right. And we don't know how digital those are. Yeah. Oh, and I guess he is in night. a neighborhood at one point. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, That's awesome. That's awesome, though. The movie takes place in a nondescript, what was it like? New, a neighborhood is called San Francisco, New York, or something like that. New yeah. Crown. Yeah. New Crown. New Crown. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Corona. Gotham. Yeah. Yeah. California. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, Nelson, Nelson Nascimento says this movie seems like it made an initial splash and disappeared. Criminal. Mm-hmm. One of the better sci-fi films in recent years. I'd love a sequel, which it deserves, but may never come. Probably never come, but yeah, I'm okay with I'm that. okay with there, not there having was a sequel. Always, yeah, there was always talk. I mean, Blumhouse would obviously love but what, It'd be the same sequel. movie. Yeah. Right, yeah. That's, yeah. It'd be we redundant there was as fuck. talks of a television show and everything, but... So really? Yeah, Definitely yeah. don't need that. But no, nothing is coming okay, well. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, maybe they, <laughs> the cooler heads prevail, and I was like, eh, we don't need it. Yeah. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, all right, a movie that apparently does Venom better than any of his own movies. I think there's a theme here. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I do like Tom Hardy. Yeah, yeah I love yeah, Tom, yeah. Hardy. We, we Tom, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy is really good in the Venom movies. Yeah, but he's really good. good. God, he's <laughs> being boof. They must. Uh, it's good paycheck, I guess. Uh, last last week we watched a movie called Vanishing Point. Mm. Uh, MF Mad points out that we uh, inducted uh, Charlotte Rampling to the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame because she was in Vanishing Point. She was in Zardoz, mm-hmm. I think, as you pointed out, Sean, and she was in Orca. That's right, that? Orca. Uh, yeah, we were orca. ahead of the time with okay. Orca. We I should save so. that for right now. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, Joey, go Blythe. listen to our episode on Orca. It's topical. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Joey Blythe says, "I don't know what I've, I don't know that I've seen this Vanishing Point, but I know I like Duel and the first half of the first Jeepers Creepers. So if this ever becomes available on streaming, 
I'll give it a go. And Scraw793 says, Scraw. I started watching this on YouTube before I realized it was the 1997 version with Vigo Mortensen. Oh, no, no. no. Don't do it. <laughs> says, the original doesn't seem to be available on streaming bloody anywhere. I hate it when that happens. I was able to track down a Blu-ray on Amazon Prime, though. I'm looking forward to checking it out. So Yeah, yeah I think we mm-hmm. talked about that, how it's not anywhere. It's not anywhere. Yeah, I know. It's one of those movies. You know, another movie that has vanished off of streaming? Yep. 28 Days Later, really? which I was looking up because uh, Killian, Killian Murphy, Murphy yeah. is in uh, Oppenheimer, and sure anywhere? enough, you wow. can't stream 28 yeah. Days Later. If you bought it, it's still in your library streaming, mm. but, sure, yeah. but yeah. for how long? Before, right. Before I mean, this is like frightening. <laughs> uh, this is physical media, people trying to scare you into buying <laughs> Blu-rays. Don't listen yeah, to yeah, don't listen listen else is going to get into the scaring propaganda, yeah, we he, will for the important yeah. things like this physical is, media. Yep, Sean hilarious. was ranting off Mike before we recorded that there was no bonus features on this blue. Nothing. There's no bonus. What? Come on. Why are we selling physical media if we're not going to put a little something into it? Because we got to make our money back <laughs> some way. <laughs> and we have people cut sit costs. down for an hour and a half no, and talk? because we got to pay grips and gaffers uh, and... You got to yeah, pay people for Pay the, union people all the that kind of shit. The but then that cuts into have, our yeah, profits in the Blu-ray that are already thin to begin wow. with. Wow. Yeah. Yep. I understand your thought process, but you sound like you're defending. Exactly I'm not. I'm not. I know I'm you're not. not. No, you're not but. Oh, God. No, I don't want that. Please don't think that. I'm not defending. <laughs> Uh, well, you can, you can, uh, yeah. Stu, you can see Vanishing Point <laughs> on the Internet Movie Database. I think there's a copy of it there. Uh, Scour YouTube. I'm sure it's there somewhere. Nope, not on YouTube. The week before we watched a movie called Black I Still Market. Know. Dark Web YouTube. Yeah, Dark Web. <laughs> we watched yeah, a STEM set. is like, I searched the Dark Web earlier yeah. today. And found I an did, <laughs> But the way he said it was like, I just happened to be on the Dark Web and I saw this. It's like, he was so casual about the Dark Web. Like, yeah, I don't even know web. how to get to the Dark Web. Yeah. Yeah. You use it. Uh, is it just it, darkweb.com? You know, it's like, it's like yeah, that darkweb.com. It's like that episode of Family Guy when he literally goes shopping at the black market. Yeah. And there's, <laughs> there's just like machine guns. He just like takes them off yeah. the shelf. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we watched I Still Know What You Did Last Summer a couple weeks ago. Travis Legler says Jeffrey Combs, who was in I Still Know What You Did Last Summer, also went on to voice Ratchet in a CGI Transformers series. My son, Remy, the Transformers fan of the family, wanted you to know that. Nice. So my kids are really into Scooby-Doo right now, and I've seen the first two live-action movies more than I care to admit. Mm. Matthew Lillard, or Matthew Lillard, is the best part of them, and I mm-hmm. can't tell if Freddie Prince Jr. as Fred was just poorly written or is he's a bad actor or what. He seems like a nice yes. guy, but damn. They just don't know what to do with him <laughs> in those movies. Those movies being Scooby-Doo or yeah. I Know What You Did Last. Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo. Fred's Scooby-Doo. a hard one to do Fred live some, action. Fred has some underrated jokes. Don't hate on Fred. Uh, okay, I won't. Oh, we got a Fred apologist I, here. I didn't realize. Yeah. No, wow. All right. Yeah. Re- revelatory from Holly. There we go. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, like Scrappy Doo was great. Too. <laughs> you got any more Scooby Doo hot right, takes? Let's yeah. not, uh, let's Is Scrappy in the movies? The second one. Okay. As the villain, as he should be. <laughs> Sean's our Scooby Doo movie expert. I have expert. not seen that movie. I just know he's in it. And wow. Wow. And, the second uh, one's rubbish. Yeah, I would agree, yeah. even though I've never seen it, but I mm-hmm. that is its you've reputation. Heard, heard as yes. much. Uh, Mark Harrison says about I Still Know What You Did Last Summer. Ah, yes. Cool horror. Just the 1990s <laughs> term for horror films that were mainstream, just like elevated horror today. Yeah, I, that's honestly, not, that's a valid that's point. That's not bad. Yeah. Cool horror. Yeah, because <laughs> they like just barely dipped into horror just enough to be called a I horror know, movie. We're still yeah, cool, but maybe we'll yeah. like, check out this horror. <laughs> yeah, thing. yeah, exactly. They're playing it cool. Yeah, they're right. just like it's gateway horror. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, James May says, "I was going to say something allegedly witty or intelligent, but then I looked at the photos of Jennifer Love Hewitt in the tanning bed, and my yeah. brain oh, melted." Right, all yep. went out the window. Yeah, yeah that's, fair. that's why it's people fair. remember yeah. that movie and that scene. Well, thank you all that's very much all. for writing in. We appreciate it. Now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of this movie, starting with Michaela. Mm-hmm. What did you think about 2018's Upgrade? You know, like I said, I did not expect like a monkey shines type plot, and it was <laughs> it was sadder than I thought it was going to be. I didn't. All I really knew about this movie was like the guy looks like Tom Hardy, and it's like similar to Venom, and like I knew it was like tech related, but I had no idea that mm-hmm. he was going to be like a quadriplegic and all that shit. Right. I didn't know I'm anything about that. No, I have not seen it because like <laughs> my opinion at the time was. That's the lesser movie. I'm like, oh, that's the, no. Because like, <laughs> well, because I love Tom Hardy so much. I love Tom Hardy so much. I'm like, that's the real movie. And this is the like, <laughs> not, you know, but um, I, I mean, 
I gotta say, this does not have an original song though, Sean. It does I not mean, have. Yeah, so there is. Wait, but they couldn't afford it. But I, I love this subgenre. I mean, I love Ex Machina. I love Invisible Man. I um, uh, what was the other one we mentioned? Looper. Looper. Looper love that. Like, yeah. I love this subgenre. So I'll always take more I can get. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, this is surprisingly big budget for Blumhouse. I feel like, and it. I didn't expect so much future tech and all that to be a part of it. Um, and Logan Marshall Green was way better than I expected, um, yeah. especially for how much he has to act by himself and do weird stuff and lots of fight choreography. That must have been like an insane amount of work just to do the fight choreography alone. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, yeah, we, we I, it's, I, I think I might have been a little hard on in the episode, but I did really like this movie. I just... There were so many obvious tweaks that could have been made to make it perfect, you know, and that was frustrating to me is that it was like 99% there, you know, um, but I say that because I love it and I know it can, I'm like holding it to a high standard because I know it can be just that much better. Um, it is hilarious that everyone in this movie is like the wish version of another actor, <laughs> yeah, they really are. but the story wise, <laughs> this is the like a, a plot story, right? right. This is yeah. the A level story, just like B level casting. Yeah. Um, but I really liked it. I enjoyed it. I had a good time watching it. I I think that in the future, I mean, this already has a cult following, but I think in the future this will come to, it'll be, yeah. Uh, Holly, we were talking off mic about how like Blue Beetle is coming out and we're like, who the fuck would watch Blue right, Beetle? Yeah. And Holly was like, one well, twenty years, the freak show will be like, oh, you know, Spider-Man came out, but Blue Beetle was the really good one. <laughs> in 20, you know, that's going to be so upgrade. So Blue Beetle is wish <laughs> Iron Man. Yeah, yes. Yeah. But... <laughs> Upgrade. It might seem like the lower tier Venom, but it's actually the better one. Uh, and I'm kind. Of, and I did look it up. Venom is PG thirteen. So this does have the edge oh, over okay, that. Okay, okay. Um, it's just I will say a uh, knock against this movie. I don't appreciate the trope of like we always have to kill off a wife to give the main character stakes. Mm-hmm. I'm very, Agency, very, yeah. very, very, very tired of watching that story. Yeah. I've seen it a million times. I will say at least Venom doesn't do that. So I will give Venom a point for that. But. Um, that's a minor gripe, I think. Mm-hmm. In and I'm nitpicking because most of it is so good. But I would definitely recommend it. Holly, what do you think? Yeah, um, I'm I'm actually I'm gonna separate. I'm not even gonna compare it to Venom, mm-hmm. honestly, mm-hmm. because I call me crazy. I like Venom. I like that movie. I like Tom Hardy. I it's problematic, but I enjoyed that movie. Um, and I'm gonna. I feel like this is a separate entity, just because like there is the gore factor. There is like a difference in um like thematics and everything and it's you know it's a dark movie so like to me i'm not comparing it so i will say um i like this movie it was not i didn't know what to expect going into it i actually hadn't heard of it until just like maybe within the last year or so um and i just i recognized the the picture the the poster yeah for as kind of random as it is like it has become recognizable as that random it really oh, has it really has and honestly like yes he is like wish tom hardy but in the picture i always thought he looked like young bill paxton every time i see this picture There's some of that yeah. at a glance i'm like is that bill pa- oh no it's not yeah. like every time but um yeah no i like this movie it's i i agree with you michaela there's some there's some plot devices that i'm like they could have just tweaked that a little mm-hmm. bit and I would have liked it a lot more. Um, but yeah, it's surprising. I really did like the gory kills. I was not expecting that. Um, like just the way this movie starts out, it doesn't feel like it's going to be that kind of movie. Right. But then it is. And I enjoyed that. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to recommend it. I liked it. Yeah. Helen. I love this shit. Uh, yeah. I, just, <laughs> you know, this is my jam. I, I'm, 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 Happy to follow the career of Lee Winnell. I guess you yeah. know, like from uh, from writer, uh, more his writing, and into right. directing. And it's like this is like a good, like solid movie. As you've heard us talk about, I mean, it's derivative as hell. Sure, but uh, but, it, but it's not like what's his name getting pulled from one movie and then directing Jurassic World. Yeah, this yeah. feels more like a better progression. Uh, right, natural, started right. It honestly feels more like like influence right it feels more like these are pieces yeah. of things that the creator really but liked. all of, yeah. but that yeah. is his thing he yeah. he is heavily i mean like death sentence is his death wish uh you yeah. know insidious is his poltergeist we uh, would all do the same thing if we were in the same I know, position right? yeah. we would all be like, making the same movies this. we loved yeah <laughs> but i like that you know um that's why I'm surprised that uh, was he attached to that Wolfman with uh, Ryan uh, Gosling. He was with, uh, in there. That's probably what he's doing now. Is just in the we area robbed. of producing their. <laughs> well, he's producing the, dark, the, new, the new Insidious, not the Dark Universe, but the the new Dark yeah, Universe as yeah. we've introduced Invisible Man and whatnot. And I'm sure yes, he was producing the new Insidious. Yeah. And everything. 
So I know he's got that, but I mean, like, as a writer, director, I think he's one to watch, you know, within the horror. You know, he's a spinoff of James Wan, but he's kind of striking out and doing his own thing. I like that. I like this. Uh, you know, uh, I like these uh, futuristic cautionary tales. All the ones that we mentioned you know, are basically all kind of, if you like those, I think you'll like this. And it's got that kind of, um, you know, it's like the John Wick uh, new Hollywood um, focus on, hey, if you actually have uh, two guys and choreography and, you know, inventive camera work, uh, sometimes that's a lot better than your big, you know, CGI, uh, you know, right. hero flying right. through. Right, we don't the, need Keanu Reeves fighting a thousand uh, uh, agents. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. So I would definitely recommend uh, Upgrade. You got to check it out. Sean, what do you think? Um, uh, I, I hadn't watched this since it first came out in theaters, so I thought it was ripe for an upgrade. Considering the, you know, the material it touches on, um, Lee wan um, uh, uh, always being like you said a, a filmmaker to watch um i forgot how fun this movie was like i forgot about the the humor and i think logan marshall green kills it yeah i, I, I forgot think, to mention that this is yeah, like he's really good it's like a bruce campbell performance it is, but without yeah. the the silliness right yeah, there's some silliness there's some which is nice to have and again um it as a juxtaposition to the violence in the movie is very nice but i, th- I think he's doing great um you know, in every aspect that the character has to go through, you know, uh, being happily married, being a quadriplegic and having dealing with life and then, you know, coming back from that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, for, uh, I'm glad I, we watched it again. Like, uh, I, th- I think this is a fun movie. Um, I like the sci-fi of it all. It is kind of a, a lower budget, low tech sci-fi of it, but that's still like, that doesn't mean it's, and sometimes it makes it better. It's more realistic to what I think the future of us is going to be, which makes it a more relatable movie, I think. Um, yeah, I, uh, I really like this movie, and, and the second viewing really you know, enforced that tonight. I'm definitely going to recommend it. Um, more Lee one l Let's let's go. Like, where, where are we going from The Invisible Man? Like, let's, let's keep going. So, yeah, Upgrade. I think it's a really good one. Um, glad we watched it again tonight. So, yes, I recommend Upgrade. And it looks like we all have. You know what that means. You have to watch you it. You have to watch Inject it. Inject it into your veins or load yeah. it into your bicep loading chamber. <laughs> Fire it off. That's the rules. Yep. All right. Well, there you go. There you have it. So next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Holly. Michaela. Is it? Holly's going to pi- be on oh, yeah, oh, right. oh, yeah. Right. We're pitch hitting. Couldn't yes. have reminded me before. Okay. Uh, I wanted to see. I yeah. <laughs> Michaela's Michaela. pinch hitting for me. <laughs> Michaela, you're pinch hitting for next yes. week. What are we doing? We're going to watch Insomnia. Christopher ah, Nolan's Insomnia right. from 2002. Wait, is this, so. Are you... Are you so the vacation? The, the, vacation? Uh, the summer vacation cruise ship has docked in the Bahamas for the okay. season. Okay. Um, okay. Because otherwise things <laughs> might get a little redundant. So, okay. uh, you agree. know, I, how many I island like slashers can we watch? <laughs> right. you know? All right. so, I agree. I agree. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to go up north nope. to Alaska ah. right. with Insomnia from 2002. <laughs> Christopher Nolan just had a movie come out, so we're finger on the pulse, hopefully. All yeah. right, there you go. We're fingering the pulse all the time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next week, Insomnia <laughs> on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, Ladies and gentlemen, the basement is going dark.